A couple weeks ago, Dr. John McDougall was on an interview with a fellow named John Dullard who has his podcast called the or called Life Spa Podcast. Now, this interview was getting a bunch of flack from the carnivore dimwits claiming that Dr. McDougal is going senile or is senile or is on in the beginning stages of dementia. And I'll be honest, I saw this one video from one of these anti-vegan YouTube channels, which I will not mention because I refuse to, and it made Dr. McDougal look really bad. Now I'm going to show you a few clips from the interview that may seem a bit outlandish if you've ever seen Dr. McDougal speak before. But before I begin, let me just say that I respect the hell out of Dr. McDougal and uh, for everything that he's done in the fields of medicine and nutrition. I'm actually currently reading his book, uh, The Starch Solution. It's very well written. And uh, I respect everything that he's done for people, you know, the, the, the lives that he's changed, the people who he's helped, the lives that he's saved with his starch solution. So nothing but respect to him. I, haven't, I am not against him at all. So let me just show you some of these clips from the interview. Look, he said that we ate 75% of our diet as fat. And according to... Uh, the, yeah. But at the same time, the, the, the research shows that we only ate at a 40, 35 to 40 percent. That's of the not true. Okay, I let's... have read the research. I have read the research from the proceedings of the National Academy of Science, from science, from every other journal that deals with the history of man. And every single research paper says that we were starch eaters and not 30 percent carbohydrate, but 80 to 90 percent carbohydrate. There is no dissension in the scientific research as to what we were eat eating. Yeah, and there, the that. No. Let me, let no. Me ask you. There are studies that go back to the, the, to the Christian Bible that show that we are starch eaters. You do agree that we have to supplement. We have to supplement omega threes and, and B12. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. You dispute the, 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 the science and what the Lancet well, article Excuse came. me, I do not dispute the science. And how much poison you want to eat? It's up to you. I don't care. I really don't care. Except for the fact that you are destroying my grandchildren's future. That bothers me a lot. You're saying animal, animal based diet would be a healthy diet? Well, it would be as good as a 10% uh, uh, M&M &M diet, or Babe Ruth Bar diet, or uh, Popsicle diet. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! So if you look at these clips and start to make judgments or assessments without actually any real context of the interview, then you would say, yeah, Dr. McDougal does look a little crazy, but he's not. In this interview, Dr. McDougal was a bit more adamant or animated because he was being interviewed by a chiropractor who was questioning his own research, the research that Dr. McDougal had found, by presenting industry-funded research which caused Dr. McDougal to get a little extra hyped up or animated. If you watch the whole interview, you'll see that Dr. McDougal presents some great points and facts based on what the science says. And when that is questioned, it seems to rattle him up a little bit. Even though this was an interview, it had hints of an unorganized debate. And if you've ever watched any of the previous interviews that Dr. McDougal has been on, you'll see that he's a very calm and collective person with, you know, with the occasional joke you throw in there. And that's mainly because he's talking with other plant-based doctors or other plant-based people or vegan people. Dr. McDougall also has a history of being very assertive when it comes to discussing any of the science and he does not budge and John Dullard was trying to promote some type of seasonal diet that could be more optimal for the human diet which is not true. I think this mainly caused Dr. McDougal to act a bit more on the rambunctious side because John Dullard has a following and if these followers follow a diet that incorporates animal foods or animal products, that could be potentially harmful because animal foods cause or promote disease. So the vibe that I got off of this was Dr. McDougal holding John Dullard to a much higher standard and he expected 
John probably to know better rather than to present ind industry funded studies that are not relevant to the actual scientific literature. I will also say that Dr. McDougall is a very animated person as he's always been and uh, he just was a little bit more animated in this interview process based on the reasons that I just gave you. I will also give a quick side note uh, that the interviewee, John Dullard, was very professional and calm during the whole interview process, so kudos to John Dullard for keeping his composure over at LiveSpa.com. The link to the whole interview will be in the description box down below, so check that out whenever you want. Since we have now cleared the air behind this fake drama with Dr. McDougall, we can move on to a topic that Dr. McDougall did bring up, which is worth discussing. Here it is. Unfortunately, when I go to such a conference, and I was going to do this at this conference because they conflicted with me, I was going to ask the audience of 500 to 1,000 people, how many of you are vegan? Would you please stand up? And half the audience would stand up. And I would say, now look around, the, look around the room and look at all the people who say they're a vegan and take a close look at their physical appearance. Now, would you please sit down? I want you to notice that half the people who stood up who said they were vegan were overweight or obese. Obese. They are fat vegan. I don't want to be known as a vegan. A vegan could live on potato chips and Cokes. You're missing the point. Even though my diet is pure vegan, <laughs> personally, and so is my whole family. This is a bit of a controversial topic, but I say screw it. Let's open up that can of worms. I think we can agree that everyone has a right to eat whatever they want as long as what they are eating does not inflict any type of unnecessary pain or harm to another sentient being. Though it is tragic to see our family, friends, coworkers, counterparts, whatever, etc. It's, you know, it's sad to see them eat themselves to a point of chronic sickness and eventual death. It is still their body, even though these same exact people are treating food as a drug. That being said, and here's where it gets sketchy, people are treating food as a drug and getting severely sick off of food which then could incur extra costs to insurance companies or government funded medical expenses, which ultimately comes out of the pockets of everyone in one shape or another. Additionally, if food is being abused like a drug, which is legal and it's costing societies billions or maybe even trillions, then why aren't drugs legal? If you believe people can eat themselves to death, why can't people just drug themselves to death? I will also say that I agree with Dr. McDougall in regards to overweight vegans and how they present themselves. I agree because the majority of people don't know any better, unfortunately, and if they see a fat vegan, their first thought is going to be associated with the image they saw and people don't want to be fat even though most people already are fat and even though that veganism isn't what makes someone fat but that's, we'll get into that in a little bit. So I agree with Dr. McDougal in that regard that as a vegan you should be healthy and in shape and not take your body for granted if you really want to contribute to change the world and stop animal cruelty and the destruction of our planet because unfortunately people are very aesthetically influenced. I'll give you a perfect example. My girlfriend has got a tremendous ass and a great physique to say the least just from eating a relatively clean vegan diet. We went out a few months ago and she saw a friend who she hadn't seen in a, like over a year and her friend wanted to know what she was doing to maintain such a great figure and was like seriously just about ready to jump on board with whatever it was that my girlfriend was doing because she wanted to have a physique that was comparable to my girlfriend. Now most people who know anything about nutrition will tell you that a vegan diet is not necessary to look good but in this case all my girlfriend was and is doing currently is 
following a relatively clean vegan diet and taking care of her life, which encompasses raising two children and maintaining a home all by herself. So you can imagine this poor woman has no time to do much of any type of workouts or training, but she is still able to maintain a great physique with minimal exercise all while just following a relatively clean vegan diet. Now let's just imagine if my girlfriend was overweight and her friend asked her what diet she was on and she responded with the vegan diet. Her friend would probably be completely turned off by this and probably wouldn't be interested in going vegan at least at that moment because she wouldn't want to look like her. Wouldn't you agree? I know it sounds shallow, but it's unfortunately the world we live in. And if you don't believe me, then please tell me, who do you know that reads scientific literature voluntarily and watch a slaughterhouse footage voluntarily on their own time to make themselves understand veganism a little better? Why do that when it is much easier to listen to the first person who supports their irrational ideas or simply read an article that is going to support their bad lifestyle habits or whatever interests them. It's unfortunate, again, but most people perceive the world only through what their eyes see and nothing much deeper than that. So looking good and taking care of ourselves is only one of the exterior motives vegans portray to the world to help draw more people into this movement that is based on making a better world for the animals, ourselves, and our future because we all live on the same planet. So let me know what you think in regards to these topics. Did you happen to see the full interview? Do you really think that Dr. McDougall is going crazy? Did the poor guy lose his marbles? Do you agree? Do you disagree with any of the points that I brought up? Let me know what you think in the comment sections down below. You know I love to engage with all of you, so please let me know. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Hit the ding dong button. You know how YouTube's got that algorithm thing going on. As always, I'm the Natural Hulkster. I wanna thank you for watching and please, Stay tuned for the next one.